In this episode, we look at one of the top 154 pounders in the world and arguably the most challenging puzzle. How good is the towering inferno Sebastian Fundora? Sebastian Alexander Fundora was born on December 28, 1997 in West Palm Beach, Florida. Fundora stands 6 feet 5 and a half inches with an 80 inch reach. He currently competes in the junior middleweight division or super welterweight division with a 154 pound limit. Sebastian Fundora made his professional debut on September 24, 2016. His professional record stands at 19 wins, 0 losses, and 1 draw. 13 of his wins have come by knockout. Currently, his win percentage is 95 and his knockout percentage is 65. Fundora is a unicorn in the sport of boxing. At nearly 6 feet 6, he competes in the junior middleweight division where, based on our research, he is the tallest fighter in said division in the world. You have to scale four divisions up to cruiserweight before finding a notable boxer with similar height and reach comparisons. Contrary to conventional wisdom, Fundora does not use his height and reach advantage to secure his wins. Despite consistently being the taller and longer fighter, he fights his opponents on the inside with relentless pressure. Towering Inferno is an apt nickname as his pressure and knack for firing off shots make him a formidable challenger. Fundora's first fight of note came on August 31st, 2019, when at 13-0, he faced off against then 14-1 Jamonte Clark in a 10-round super welterweight contest. This was a rough back and forth fight where neither boxer relied on defense and chose to fight fire with fire. Both fighters landed heavy blows at varying times. Fandora hurt Clark at one point, which led to the two clinching and wrestling to the canvas. The fight would end in a split draw. According to CompuBox, Clark outlanded Fandora 168 total punches to 130, despite throwing only three more total shots. Thus far, Clark has been the only fighter to outland Fundora based on recorded CompuBox stats. Additionally, Clark has a case as far as potentially being the only person to have defeated Fundora thus far in his career. Fundora's next major test came on August 22, 2020, when he stepped in the ring with battle-tested Nathaniel Gallimore for a 10-round Super Welterweight scrap in Los Angeles, California. While it was widely considered his first significant test, it turned out to be one of Fundora's most lopsided victories and one of his best performances. Gallimore came into the contest 21-4-1, having faced the likes of Jason Rosario, Julian Williams, Patrick Texiera, and Erickson Lubin, amongst other notable names. Gallimore could not get anything started offensively and took an onslaught of clean punches from Fundora. The referee stopped the fight in the sixth round, likely saving Gallimore from a bad knockout. According to CompuBox, Fundora outlanded Gallimore 168 to 35, more than quadrupling Gallimore's punches landed. Additionally, Fundora's 168 punches landed were more than the 129 total punches that Gallimore threw in the fight. This victory put Fundora on the boxing world's radar. Fundora would take on scrappy veteran Jorge Cota on May 1st, 2021 in Carson, California. Like previous fights, things started fast as the two battled blow for blow, Cota landing heavy shots on the taller Fundora. By the third round, the towering Inferno started to take over as he started to land many clean and heavy shots in succession on the game Cota. In the fourth round, after Coda continued to take clean punches with his face being busted and bleeding, the referee stepped in to halt the fight. Coda came into the fight 30-4 and, and became another solid test pass for Fandora. The punch stats in this fight were lopsided by CompuBox recording as Fandora outlanded Coda in total punches 141-62. to Interestingly enough, Fundora only landed two jabs while Coda landed one, which tells you the story of the fight in some sense. In another test on December 5th, 2021, 
33-0 Spaniard Sergio Garcia traveled to Los Angeles to face off against Thundora in a 12-round super welterweight contest. Garcia was a solid all-around fighter, though largely unknown, but this contest was considered a test for him just as much as it was for Fandora. Garcia was able to exceed Fandora's output according to CompuBox, who recorded Fandora as having thrown 717 punches to Garcia's 778. This fight lacked the overall back and forth that many previously witnessed in other Fandora fights, Garcia was able to force Fandora to fight from the outside, successfully nullifying some of the explosive flurries that we were accustomed to seeing from Fandora. Fandora was able to pick up the 12-round unanimous decision with this being the first time he'd gone 12 full rounds as a pro. This fight was also fought at a slower pace and neither fighter was very efficient as Fandora landed 26% of his punches to Garcia's 21%. On April 9, 2022, Vandora stepped in for his stiffest test to date when he faced off against then 24-1 Erickson Lubin in Las Vegas for a 12-round super welterweight contest with the WBC interim super welterweight title on the line. This turned out to be Vandora's most brilliant performance and the best fight of his career thus far. Lubin gave Fandora all he could handle as the more athletic and seemingly harder puncher between the two. The two men exchanged punches back and forth throughout the contest. In the midst of hurting Fandora with a second round flurry of shots, Fandora landed a right uppercut that sent the five nine and a half Lubin to the canvas. It looked as though Fandora would take over from there, but Lubin remained game and continued to throw and land hard shots despite his face starting to swell visibly. In the seventh, Lubin landed a combination of unanswered hooks that sent Fandora to the canvas and in trouble. Fandora was able to recover and by the end of the ninth round, he had regained control, landing vicious shots to Lubin's body and head. From there, Lubin's trainer, Kevin Cunningham, stepped in to call the fight off and save his fighter from taking further damage. At the time, Lubin's face was grotesquely swollen and deformed. The CompuBot stats favored Fandora as he threw 706 total punches to Lubin's 368. Lubin was a more efficient fighter, landing 40.5% to Fandora's 36.1%. In the end, Fandora did the most damage with 233 of his 255 punches landed being power shots. Fandora is now on a promising career trajectory. He is now the interim WBC Super Welterweight World Champion and would be a challenge for all competitors moving forward. Currently, Jermel Charlo is the ring, IBF, WBA, and WBC World Super Welterweight Junior Middleweight Champion and Brian Castano of Argentina holds the WBO title. Charlo and Castano are scheduled to face each other on May 14, 2022. Fandora has passed each test with flying colors thus far in his career, and what's next may be his most significant statement. Let us hope the stars align. Thanks for watching.